I've decided to give the master keys to our new place to my parents. What do you mean? I want my parents to be able to come and go as they please. How can you expect me to accept that? If you can't accept it, then we might have to consider divorce. How selfish can you be? All right, I understand. Misunderstanding my agreement, my husband smiled contentedly, thinking I had complied with his wishes. However, what I had agreed to was the divorce. Upon learning this fact, my husband and mother-in-law were faced with an unexpected situation. My name is Emily, I am 36 years old and work as a freelance remote worker. My husband, Mike, and I have been married for 10 years. We have a 9-year-old son named Kevin, and the three of us live happily together. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. In fact, it's surprising that our marriage has lasted for 10 years. The fact that we have a child is probably a significant reason why we haven't divorced. We met at a singles party where he was a successful businessman working at a popular company at the time. He was cheerful and had a stable income, and since we were close in age, I found him attractive. With his proactive approach, we gradually became closer and eventually started dating. Our relationship progressed smoothly, and after a year and a half, we decided to get married. We quickly met each other's parents and finished meeting with both families. After a successful wedding, we started our new life as a couple. We spent happy times together and about a year later, our son was born. However, there was some trouble at that time. Being new to childbirth and parenting, I was very anxious and shared my feelings with my husband, who suddenly called his mother. Then he said, don't worry, my mom will support us from now on. I just wanted to talk and calm my mind with my husband but it seemed he had already consulted with his mother-in-law, and from the next day, she started coming to our house. Emily, don't worry because I'm here. I'll teach you all the tricks of parenting. Uh, okay. That wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to learn and practice on my own. However, my mother-in-law interfered with my parenting every time. That's not right. To raise a child properly, you need to listen to my advice. Honestly, my mother-in-law was a troublesome person who believed her way was the only right way. She would become extremely angry if things didn't go her way. And, as if it was natural, she came almost every day. That alone was a significant stress, and I had to prepare extra lunch and snacks for her visits, which also increased our expenses. Moreover, she used the kitchen and food items without asking, which was very troubling. And it appeared my husband had given her a key because she would suddenly enter our house while I was relaxing in the morning. The first time my mother-in-law used her key to enter our house without permission, my heart nearly leaped out of my chest. In the early days of our marriage, I was troubled by my mother-in-law's behavior and, of course, consulted with my husband. When I started to talk about the issue with his mother, my husband proudly said, Isn't it reassuring to have my mom around? Annoyed that my husband didn't understand the situation, I made it clear. Actually, I'm quite troubled. Huh? Your mother insists on her own opinions and doesn't listen to mine. Plus, she eats a lot at lunch, and I have to always keep snacks stocked. Hearing this, my husband became displeased. What are you talking about? My mom is doing all this for our good. That's no way to talk about her. She raised me well, so she's not giving us wrong advice. It's only natural to entertain her since she's helping us. It's worth paying her for her help. But there's no need to pay. You're too ungrateful. You need to change your attitude. I'll tell my mom to be stricter with you. What? No. My husband didn't understand, making the situation even more complicated. From the next day, my mother-in-law, informed by my husband, became even stricter with me. It was more than just guidance. It felt like harassment. She complained about even minor things and frequently criticized me. You're such a clumsy daughter-in-law. I'm concerned about the future of Kevin, who inherits your genes. I wondered why I had to be subjected to such comments. Constant harsh words from my mother-in-law nearly broke my spirit. I started to think that if this continued, I might need to consider divorce. Then. My husband received a job transfer offer. The company suggests that transferring could lead to a promotion, but you'd prefer to stay here, right? 
I immediately replied that I wanted to transfer. What? If we stay here, we can also get help from mom. It's fine. I've been thinking about going back to work anyway. I see. If you say so, maybe we should transfer. My husband's transfer was a great joy for me. It must be a gift from God. Fortunately, I can work remotely, so I'm not restricted by location. That's why I can be flexible about my husband's transfer. And then we move to another state. If you move far away, I won't be able to take care of you. My mother-in-law said that with regret, but I was delighted inside. Without her, we could live more peacefully. Then, a new day began for just the three of us. Life in a new place was more comfortable than expected. The days without my mother-in-law felt even more pleasant. I drop off my son at daycare, focus on my work at home, and manage the household. I can finish preparing dinner before picking up my son. Everything is on my own schedule, and I can spend my time freely. It was truly blissful. I could enjoy lots of fun times with my son, just the two of us. We spent enjoyable times walking in the park and shopping. By the time my husband came home, dinner was ready and we could have a happy meal together as a family. This was the family scene I had always dreamed of. Unlike the housework under my mother-in-law's supervision, now I feel happy. I sincerely wish to stay in this place forever. And maybe my wish came true when my husband unexpectedly didn't have another transfer and we could spend six years in this place. My son became eight years old and recently started swimming. I was proud to see him practice hard and he looked great to me, like any parent would think. My son is growing up to be a very honest and good boy, with many friends, enjoying his school life. However, during this enjoyable school life, my husband's retransfer was decided. Moreover, the return destination was the previous branch, meaning we would be closer to my in-laws again, which made me feel a bit uneasy. Since my husband was transferring, my son and I had no choice but to follow. My son was very sad about leaving his friends, saying goodbye with tears at his farewell party. And returning near my in-laws after six years, we started a new life in a rented apartment for the time being. My son, being sociable, made new friends quickly, which relieved me. However, my biggest concern was the presence of my mother-in-law, and she would probably start visiting our home frequently again. While I was thinking about it, my mother-in-law came over on a holiday. Oh, it's been a while. Mom, it's been a while. I'm so happy that you all have come back. My mother-in-law was all smiles. However, I felt a heavy fog in my heart, wondering if she was happy just because her son was back or because she could bother me again. As expected, my mother-in-law started showing up frequently during weekdays. Mother-in-law, are you visiting again? Yes, is there a problem? Kevin is at school, and I'm the only one at home during this time. So, you don't need to give any guidance anymore. Oh, am I such a nuisance? That's terrible. I'll have a talk with Mike about this. It's really troublesome. When my mother-in-law visits often, it disrupts my daily schedule. I can't focus on my work, and the burden of housework increases. So, I've been showing clearly that her presence is a nuisance. Why do you come so often? What about your own home? Shocked and outraged by my question, my mother-in-law replied, That's none of your business. I'm sacrificing my time to oversee your housework, but I've said it's not necessary. What are you talking about? A daughter-in-law rebelling against her mother-in-law? Rebelling. Are you expecting submission? What a disrespectful way to speak. Have you become quite arrogant over these six years? You should show respect to your elders. Then, I would appreciate it if you would behave in a manner that warrants respect. Always talking back, what a troublesome daughter-in-law you are. Saying this, her face turned beet red. Can you prepare lunch quickly? Why should I have to prepare your lunch as well? What? Since I'm here, it's only natural, isn't it? You came here on your own. I didn't invite you. Why do you say such disrespectful things? That's something you should be asking yourself. Huh? This conversation is going nowhere. Then it might be best if you leave. I was going to leave anyway. With that, my mother-in-law left in anger and I immersed myself in work, relieved of the disturbance. 
However, the interaction with my mother-in-law had taken up my time, causing a delay in my work. I hurried to finish my work and started preparing dinner as my son was due to return home. That evening, as expected, my husband came home with an angry look. Hey, I heard from mom. You were rude and drove her away? That's not true. She left on her own accord. Stop talking back. What? Mom was looking forward to spending time with you. It's terrible to treat her so coldly. It's not that. She wasn't looking forward to spending time with me. She was looking forward to harassing me. What are you talking about? There's no way mom would harass anyone. My husband completely dismissed my words, only taking his mother's side. He never doubted his mother and was clearly a mama's boy. Whenever his mother is involved, he loses his ability to judge clearly. Dealing with this mother and son is really troublesome. While I was pondering this, my son started talking. I often see grandma bullying mom. What? My husband looks surprised at my son's words. Grandma always says mean things to mom and I feel sorry for her. Is that true? Heaven wouldn't lie. He's right. I'm always being harassed and just standing up for myself. With my son taking my side and testifying to the bullying, my husband was left without a comeback. I can't believe mom would do such things. My husband's voice weakened and he stopped talking. Thanks to my son, I was spared from unnecessary stress. Next time I buy snacks, I need to get lots of his favorites. Even though my mother-in-law visited again, I didn't let her in. Why won't you open the door? I don't want you to disturb my work anymore. What? Stop joking around. After those words, she pressed the doorbell repeatedly, but I went into my office and played music loudly to drown out the sound of the doorbell. Finally, I was free from my mother-in-law's interference. Immersed in my work, I smirked to myself. Despite her multiple visits, I didn't respond, forcing her to leave. How can this be allowed? The problem is you coming over unannounced and just making yourself comfortable. Why don't you go back and clean your own house? Why are you being so terrible? Open the door now. My mother-in-law, furious, kicked the door. Stop it, or I'll call the police. The police. Don't say such scary things. You're the one doing something frightening. Kicking someone's front door is unthinkable. That's because you won't let me in. Well, I don't want to let you in, that's obvious. I'm family. Even if you are, you should have some decency. As far as I'm concerned, you're a stranger. If you continue to linger, I really will call the police. Fine, I'll leave. With that, my mother-in-law finally left. That night, as expected, my husband was furious. But after hearing the recording from the voice recorder I had prepared, he was at a loss for words. This should have made him realize the absurdity of his mother's actions. Afterwards, my mother-in-law stopped coming, probably because my husband had a talk with her. Since then, we've been able to live peacefully. With enough savings, we finally decided to buy a new house. Building our own house and living there with my family has been my long-standing wish. Now, that dream has become a reality. After consulting with the contractor and having numerous discussions, our house was finally completed. My son and I excitedly talked about our new home. However, one day, my husband suddenly made this suggestion. I've decided to give the master keys of our house to my parents. What do you mean? I think it's best for my mother and everyone to come and go freely. She seems to have reflected on her actions, and after all, it's best for the whole family to get along. How can you expect me to accept that? Huh? You know what I've been through, right? And you still want to give her the master keys? That's out of the question. If you can't accept it, then we might have to consider divorce. My husband, red with anger, said this and slammed the table. How selfish can he be? The moment I saw my husband take such an attitude for the first time, my love for him cooled. All right, I understand. Misunderstanding my agreement, my husband smiled contentedly, thinking I had complied with his wishes. That's good. Then I'll proceed in that direction. My husband had a triumphant look on his face. However, what I had agreed to was the divorce. When my husband and mother-in-law realized this fact, they were faced with an unexpected situation. 
I secretly packed my belongings and sent them to my parents' house for the time being. Then, before the scheduled moving day with my husband, I had the movers come to my parents' house and transfer all the belongings to the new house. I was unpacking at the new house with my parents when I got a call from my husband. Hey, what's going on? Why are Kevin's and your belongings not here? That's because we've already moved to the new house. Huh? Wasn't the move scheduled for next week? Why are you doing things on your own? Because we're getting a divorce. What? You're the one who mentioned divorce if I didn't agree, remember? You said okay to. Yes, I agreed to the divorce. I can't accept this. This can't be happening. The call ended there, and about 30 minutes later, I heard sounds of someone trying to open the house's door. My husband and mother-in-law had come. I left the chain lock on and cracked open the door a bit. Why won't the key work? What have you done to Mike's house? Amidst their loud protests, I calmly stated, It seems there's a big misunderstanding here, but this is my house. What did you say? My mother-in-law expressed shock and disbelief. You might not have known, but I bought this house with the money I earned as an engineer. Therefore, the house is in my name, and I have the right to change the locks. This can't be. Unbelievable. Mike, this is a lie, right? It's actually your house, isn't it? My husband, faced with his mother's question, looked down, unable to respond. Is it really? Realizing the truth, my mother-in-law slumped down on the spot. Now that you understand, would you mind leaving? Emily, wait. I don't accept this divorce. I have the right to live here. I won't say I'll give the keys to mom anymore, just let me in. No, I can no longer trust you. From now on, let's communicate through lawyers. If you insist on staying, I will really call the police. With that, my husband and mother-in-law hastily retreated. Afterwards, through a lawyer, I was able to smoothly proceed with the divorce from my husband. Additionally, I managed to secure educational expenses for my son. Following this incident, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law lost favor with the ex-father-in-law and were both kicked out of the house. I heard they are now forced to live frugally in a modest apartment. They brought it upon themselves, and it serves them right. Meanwhile, I am enjoying a happy life with my son. In the near future, I plan to invite my parents to live with us. My son adores my parents greatly, and the days spent with them are sure to be filled with joy. Moving forward, I will continue to work hard and support my son's growth with all my effort. How much do you want? We're willing to pay, so let's settle this. The reason I panicked was because, the moment I entered the hospital room, she said words I'd never expected. Wait, what? Mia, are you serious about what you just said? Yes, I am. Explain yourself. They treated us so terribly, it almost led to a major tragedy. It was clear they were mocking us. After doing something so terrible, they want to settle with money? I can't accept a settlement. Mia, take responsibility properly. That's unbelievable. You're as stubborn as ever. You don't know what might happen if you make us angry. Don't push it. Suppressing my anger, I continued to argue with this brazen and shameless couple. I think we've heard enough. My husband intervened in the argument. I had never seen such a frightening expression on my husband's face before. Mia, You've always believed that money can solve everything since high school. You haven't changed. Everyone wants money, right? Am I wrong? That's right. As long as you have money, you can solve anything. Even this woman will shut up if you give her money. Facing the couple, my husband said, if that's the case, let's see if we can really settle this with money. Mia and her husband were overwhelmed by my husband's suggestion. But in the end, they left the hospital room with some provoking words. As Mia said, maybe everyone does want money. Money brings us happiness and joy, like magic. It's the only thing with such magical power in this world. But, as my husband said, there are things money can't solve or buy. Along with their attempt to almost kill me and my baby, they would soon understand this whether they like it or not. I am Susan Johnson. I'm 32 years old and 9 months pregnant. My husband Kevin, also 32, 
eagerly awaits the birth of our child. To celebrate this momentous occasion, we wanted to share our joy quietly, but it wasn't going to be easy. Because there was someone who didn't like the fact that we were going to have a child. That person was none other than Mia, a high school acquaintance and a fellow mother, who always managed to meddle in my life. Mia, who was a senior to both me and my husband during high school, came from a wealthy family that owned a big company. She was beautiful, excelled academically and athletically, and was like the idol of our school. But being pampered by her parents from a young age made her extremely selfish. She misunderstood that she could get anything with money, and so she had a bad reputation. Despite this, she was interested in Kevin and used both force and money to try to make him her boyfriend. However, Kevin was not interested in her and always cared for me. So, I became his girlfriend instead of Mia. She didn't like Kevin choosing me, and from then on, she saw me as a rival. You and Kevin don't match. Break up with him now. But, Mia, that's too much. Kevin, you know I'm more beautiful than Susan, and I have money. Please stop, Mia. Don't say things like that. We were tormented by Mia's harsh words and money throughout high school. I consulted with teachers multiple times, but even they couldn't stand up to Mia's financial power, and the situation remained unresolved. After Mia graduated, we avoided her as much as possible, not wanting to provoke her. We lost contact with her for a while. Several years later, Mia unexpectedly reappeared in our lives and confronted us. Oh, Susan and Kevin. I haven't seen you in a while, but it looks like you've built a decent life despite being poor. Mia had also gotten married and had kids. Her family flaunted luxury brands and drove expensive cars. She continued her high school ways, using her wealth to control her fellow mothers, even possibly giving them money as allowance. Many of them declined, but they were tempted by the money and ended up accepting it. In exchange for the money, they had to do whatever Mia asked. Then Mia, using the mom friend she had paid off, began to harass us. Susan, your fashion sense has always been lacking, hasn't it? Has Kevin never really bought you any decent clothes since the old days? Can you stop parading on the main street like you own it? You should walk down the side streets. This isn't a place for people like you. Here, take some money and have lunch at some family restaurant or diner. Mia would criticize our appearance and actions like this, flaunt her money, and continue to harass us just like in high school. The more you react to people like that, the more they want to annoy you. So, just ignore her and she'll probably stop someday. I initially wanted to argue with my husband's advice, but soon accepted his words. Indeed, as my husband said, it was evident that people like Mia escalated their harassment when they got a reaction. Together with my husband, we dealt with Mia's provocations with minimal interaction and ensured that her words didn't affect us. One day, I found out I was pregnant, the moment I shared the news with my husband. He was overjoyed, ready to take on his role as a father with pride and do his best for our child. Inspired by my husband's determination, I also mustered the courage to live proudly as a mother and as a person. I hoped for peaceful days without Mia's harassment. But reality was not so kind. One day, nine months into my pregnancy, I encountered Mia while returning from shopping with my visibly swollen belly. Oh, Susan, you've gotten so fat since the last time I saw you. What have you been eating to look so embarrassing? Huh? This isn't because I've gained weight. I'm pregnant. It's natural. If you have no business with me, could you please be quiet? Apparently angered by my response, Mia stood in my way. You might have a bigger belly now, but it seems your attitude has grown too. How dare someone poor and plain like you get pregnant? You're really pushing my buttons. I don't care what you think, Mia. I just want to have my child in peace. I tried to defuse the situation, but it only angered Mia further. Excuse me, Susan? Is that how you speak to me? As I tried to walk away, Mia chased after me, attempting to grab my arm. In the ensuing commotion, her right arm struck my belly hard. The impact made me fall, and a sharp pain radiated from my abdomen. In agony, 
I hurriedly took out my phone from my bag and called my husband, barely managing to say, the baby. What should I do? Before I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I realized I was in a hospital bed, feeling warm under an electric blanket with an four drip in my arm. I heard familiar voices nearby. As I turned, I saw my close friends, Olivia and Emma, sitting beside me. Why are you here? Oh, is my baby okay? Don't move, Susan. You need to rest. I tried to sit up but was stopped by the sharp pain in my belly. Olivia and Emma tried to help me lay down, and that's when I noticed my belly had shrunk. A nurse informed me that I had gone into premature labor shortly after losing consciousness, and they had performed an emergency C-section. The baby was in an incubator due to being premature but was thankfully healthy. My husband, sensing the urgency of my call, had rushed over. He'd been informed of what had transpired by Olivia, Emma, and the attending doctor, and was livid. At that time, following Olivia and Emma's advice to get plenty of rest, I decided to focus on my recovery so I could see the baby as soon as possible. However, the next day, an unexpected pair visited my hospital room. Mia and her husband, Matt. Mia, how artacious of you. Just to be sure, why are you here? Olivia and Emma stared sternly at the couple. However, the two of them approached my bed as if they didn't even see them. How audacious of them to just barge into my room without knocking, especially after what they did to me. I felt so disgusted that I couldn't help but twist my face in repulsion. Then, the rude couple suddenly threw out an unbelievable proposition. We'll be straightforward. How much do you want? Excuse me? How much do you want? I'm offering to pay, so let's settle this. The moment they stepped into the room and uttered those unexpected words, I panicked. Wait, what? Mia, are you serious about what you just said? Yes, I am. Explain yourself. They had been so close to causing a major tragedy, and their terrible treatment of us was evident. To suggest settling all of this with money after all they did was unthinkable. I can't accept a settlement. Mia, take responsibility properly. But instead of listening, Mia and Matt just kept hurling insults. That's unbelievable. You're as stubborn as ever. You don't know what might happen if you make us angry. Don't push it. It's not about being stubborn. You should stop making ridiculous claims and looking down on us. Yeah, Mia. Have you forgotten what you did to Susan? One misstep and it could have been a much bigger problem. Susan's baby was really in her belly. And you put them in danger without thinking. And now you're offering money as if that makes everything okay? Shouldn't you be grateful? Just take the settlement before you make us even angrier. Know your place. It's like you weren't taught anything by your parents. Olivia and Emma, in agreement with me, rebuked Mia and Matt, who just grew more infuriated and let loose on not just me, but also on them. As everyone forgot they were in a hospital and argued, the door of the room slowly opened with a creak. I understand what you're trying to say, but there's no way we're going to resolve this with money. My husband spoke with a quiet but firm voice. Olivia and Emma looked at him in surprise. Mia and Matt hadn't expected him, and his unprecedented fury made them shrink back. Seeing the side of my husband was new to me, Olivia, and Emma. We were rendered speechless by his anger. My husband went up to Mia and Matt and said with a powerful tone, Mia. You've always believed that money can solve everything since high school. You haven't changed. Everyone wants money, right? Am I wrong? Well, everyone desires money. There are things it can't buy or problems it can't solve. This incident is indeed a prime example. And no matter how much money was offered, I couldn't accept it. Both my daughter in the incubator and I are fortunately healthy and alive. But we might have been sent to the afterlife despite it being such a grave incident. Mia seemed to have no remorse or understanding at all. The same goes for Matt who was sitting next to her. They probably just have that kind of mindset. Thinking this way, my anger towards them grew, and I didn't want them to suggest so casually that this matter could be resolved with money. I feel the same way as Kevin. If money could resolve everything, there would be no need to involve the police or lawyers. Let me make this clear once again. You both should take responsibility. 
What's with you? You're more stubborn than usual today, aren't you? Aren't you all happy if you receive money? That's right. Anything can be resolved as long as you have money. You should keep quiet if you're given some. You should know your place. Weren't you taught anything by your parents? At this point, seeing Mia and Matt rudely cursing and acting as if money was the solution to all problems. I didn't even have the energy to get angry anymore. But then, my husband, pointing at Mia and Matt, said strongly, If you believe money can settle this, why don't we put that to a test? Huh? What do you mean? What? Mia and Matt were taken aback by my husband's insinuation, and I was equally puzzled. Yet, with mocking expressions, Mia and Matt confronted my husband. Are you out of your mind? What are you trying to do? Poor people like you and Susan can't do anything. Mia spat out those words and left the hospital room with Matt. Kevin, are you sure about what you said? I'll handle everything. Don't worry, my dear. There's nothing to be concerned about. After saying that, for some reason, Kevin made eye contacts with Olivia and Emma. As if Olivia and Emma understood, they both nodded and told me reassuringly, Don't worry. I still didn't fully understand the situation, but the stress from the confrontation was taking a toll on my post-surgery body. I wanted to avoid any further confrontations or arguments. So, I decided to rely on my husband and focus on my recovery. The next evening, Mia stormed into the hospital, her face beat red with anger. Seeing her face, it was clear she was furious. Hey, I know you're in there. Get up and come out right now, you cowardly, tacky woman. You set this whole thing up, didn't you? I can see right through it. Nurses outside the hospital room were arguing with her as she continued to shout. Her voice filled with anger. At that moment, my husband, who was on his way back from work, saw Mia causing a scene outside the hospital and calmly said to her, What are you thinking? Bursting into the hospital and shouting like this. Are you out of your mind? Mia exploded with rage at him. I know everything. Just because of a simple disagreement, you decided to involve the police and lawyers? Susan and you orchestrated all of this, didn't you? Just because? You say strange things. For a delusional woman like you, that's probably the most effective and fitting response. What? You're being inconsiderate to the other patients. Now, leave. Make your excuses at the police station. At Kevin's words, Mia's anger intensified as she tried to approach my room. However, she was stopped by the security guards who were alerted by the commotion. Her voice grew fainter, presumably as she was escorted out of the hospital. I could hear sirens and Mia's shouts outside, suggesting Kevin had reported her and the police were taking her away. That night, I received a call from Matt. I have a request. Please don't make this situation any bigger and don't involve me anymore. I'm divorcing her. I won't do anything else to you, please. He called out of nowhere, spouting incomprehensible things and acting selfishly. If the wife is as she is, the husband is as well. I'll hear the details later. Stop bothering me with your baseless, selfish claims. After I hung up on him, I immediately blocked his number and could finally settle into the peaceful rest that followed after. Later, I learned that Kevin had close friends, among them Olivia and Emma's husbands. Coincidentally, Olivia's husband was a police officer and Emma's husband was a journalist. After the incident with Mia and Matt at the hospital, Kevin had asked for their help. They gladly agreed. Olivia and Emma also offered their assistance as they were furious at Mia's actions. First, Kevin filed an assault and injury complaint against Mia, which, thanks to the help of Olivia's police connections, led to her arrest. During the subsequent interrogation by Emma, who was a lawyer, Mia desperately tried to defend herself. However, Olivia had recorded the conversation in the hospital and presented it as evidence. With the additional eyewitness accounts of Olivia and Emma, Mia was found guilty and was ordered to pay a hefty compensation. Thanks to Emma's husband, the whole affair was published in the newspaper. As a result, not only Mia but her family also suffered a significant blow. It was revealed that her parents had embezzled company funds to cover up their daughter's misdeeds, plunging their business into crisis. As for Matt, 
He was acting selfishly, leveraging Mia's financial power, which made everyone have a negative impression of him, and it seemed like rumors about him spread at work. Matt was met with cold stares from his colleagues, and there were whispers about him here and there, deteriorating his relationship with his co-workers. The situation worsened further as the rumor reached the HR department. The upper management of the company began to distrust Matt and as a result, the HR department decided to transfer Matt to another branch. Naturally, Matt and Mia got divorced. Mia was disowned by her parents, and even her children were taken away from her. Struggling with the debt from the compensation and socially isolated due to the incident, she reportedly ended up living as a homeless person in a park. Olivia and Emma saw her receiving food at a soup kitchen. On the other hand, Matt, unable to handle the isolation and gossip at work, suddenly quit. Rumors said he left on a train, but his whereabouts remained unknown. Several months after the incident, I was discharged from the hospital and both my child and I were in excellent health. We received substantial compensation from Mia. My daughter showed no after effects and has been growing healthily. With this incident, I deepened not only my bond with my husband but also with my friends including Olivia and Emma. Now, peaceful days have returned to us and we are truly happy.